Hey everyone, welcome again to another lesson in this Tosca automation course. Today we are going to talk about action modes in Tosca. Now, although in some of my previous sessions I have already used some of the action modes like input and constraint or wait on, but we'll talk about all of these action modes in more details and we'll look at some of the examples using these action modes. So what is an action mode? Action mode is used to steer your test objects inside your test cases. It also defines how the value in the value field of your test case will be applied for the test step values in order to steer your controls. Now action modes which are available on the X step values depend on the interface type. Either you are using a GUI or non GUI, then according to that, the action modes would be available in your test cases in the respective test step values. The different action modes which are available in Tosca are the following. So the first action mode is input. Now, this is very common action mode which you must have seen while using uh, Tosca. So this is used to uh, basically input values into test objects. Okay, something like uh, uh, edit box where you are trying to input some value. So you will uh, by default use this action mode which is called input. And then there is insert. Now this insert is for non UI uh, interface environments. So you will not see if you are using a UI environment, right? UI based application. It is only for the non UI applications, something like an XML file. So it allows you to create objects uh, inside an XML file, right? So you can use this insert action mode. The next is buffer action mode. So if you need input values in different test steps or in different test cases, right? So you can um, store these values or buffer these values using this buffer action mode. So it is like a global variable which can store some values and it can be used across any of your test cases. Okay. Then there is constraint. It limits the search for a superordinate node and it is mostly used with tables. So we'll look at an example where you will see that when you are steering through a table, you can use this constraint mode or constraint action mode in order to limit your search for certain rows and columns based on some particular values or constraints. Okay. Then there is verify action mode. This is basically used for verification a step in your test cases. So it allows values and control properties and test objects to be verified. So this is also a very commonly used action mode uh, because you need to have a verification step in every test case. So probably you'll be using this verify action mode. Then there is wait on. Uh, it stops the execution of the test case until the property has the specified value. Now we have seen an example, but we'll look at more examples of a wait on action mode. And the last but final uh, action mode is select. Now it allows you to select specific nodes. Uh, this also is pretty uh, useful in terms of steering uh, tables. So we'll be looking at an example where we'll see that the select action mode is automatically um, used by Tosca whenever you are uh, steering through tables, rows and columns. Now let's try to use Tosca and see um, some of these action modes. So uh, we'll be looking at um, how we can use the verify constraint and select action modes while steering a particular table in Tosca. So right now I've opened my Tosca and here we'll be recording some modules and we'll see how we can use the different constraints to steer a particular table. So for that, I'll be using this page where we have got a table and as you can see, there are some rows and columns here, right? So what we will do is we'll try to pick up a particular row and we'll try to verify if this email exists in that particular row. So that's what is our goal. 
um, and we'll achieve it through different action modes in Tosca. So let's go ahead and scan this module first. So I have created a particular folder here and I'm going to scan this particular application. Select the respective application and then click on scan as always. And then it will show you all the different uh, controls in this particular page, right? Out of these, uh, we just need the table, okay? Uh, which is also called the person's table, okay? And um, I'm going to name this module as obstacle. Um, and I can name it action modes, okay? And then um, I'm going to save it and close it. Okay. Now um, our module is ready and let's go ahead and create a test case and we'll see how we can use this particular um, action modes in Tosca, right? So I'm going to create a folder called action modes. And inside this, I'm going to create a test case, okay? So I'm going to call it verify tables. So let's open the test case here and then uh, let's put our module inside this. So we have got obstacle action modes and we have now got our table, right? So this is also an example where I will show you how you can steer through uh, different dynamic web tables, right? So when you scan a particular table, it automatically records the rows and columns, and you will also get automatically all the different column headers here, right? So we have got uh, the last name for a first name, email, action, and also you can uh, select this dollar one which will select the first row or you can select the last row uh, also or you can also give it up any particular row using this dollar and inside this brackets which is n and can be replaced by any particular number okay so basically you can select any row depending on uh, either the row number or uh, depending on these uh, column headers Okay, so uh, what we want to do, uh, let's go back here. Um, so let's select a particular example here, okay? So let's see um, if we want to um, do this Jane row, right? Or we want to yeah, select this row, and then we want to verify whether the email is correct or not, which is Jane at example.com. So let's see how we can do this using um, different action modes, okay? So first, uh, we need to steer to the table. So uh, I'm going to select inside the row, I'm going to select this particular cell, okay? So um, it will be the first name, okay? And I'm going to change this action mode. As you can see, all the action modes are available here. And the particular action mode, which we are talking about select, right? So this is the select action mode, as you can see, Tosca has automatically used the select action mode for the table and the row because we are selecting this table and the row in order to get to this cell, right? So we need to use the action mode to select here. And after that, I'm going to use the constraint mode here, okay? And what the constraint action mode is going to do is it is going to constrain the search for this particular cell based on the value which I provide for this cell, okay? So here, uh, what I can say is, um, I can look for a value whose inner text is equals equals Jane, okay? So that's the value and it is a constraint. So this makes your search faster. If there are hundreds of rows, it will look for this particular constraint value and then it will limit the search uh, for that particular row. Um, and then once we have got the first name as 
the gene, right? So this is the value which we have given. So we don't need anything else because this is unique in all of these rows, right? This name doesn't exist here anymore. So I can limit my search based on this first name equals to Jane, right? And now I can go ahead and uh, verify my email, okay? So for this next cell, I'm going to select email. And this time I will leave the action mode as verify, okay? And um, I will say, um, here also I can use the inner text. Right, so in a text equals equals gene dot do at example dot com. Okay, and let's see if the value is okay. It's gene at example dot com, not gene dot do. So let me correct that. Okay, so that's that's my verification step, and that's my constraint. So we have used three action modes here: select, constraint, and verify. Okay. And that's our complete test case. Now let's try and run this and see whether it works as expected or not. So as you can see, uh, my execution has passed and we'll look at the results now, okay? Here you can see, uh, it will show you the table and the rows which you have selected, right? Um, and it will, only show you log info for the verification step, right? Not for the other steps. And that is the reason you should have a verification step for each test case, right? So here it is showing verification was successful. It will show you the expected value, which uh, you have given gene at example.com. And that's also the actual value, which it has grabbed from the particular page, right? Now, let me show you another example, uh, how you can extend this for more extensive scenarios, like uh, like the one here uh, where we have got this um, example called John, right? So this uh, particular test case will fail if I'm going to change this particular row to uh, look for this John at example.com. And why? Because the first name is same in both the rows, right? So you cannot use constraint in just the first name and get through your result. It is going to fail because there are two duplicate rows with the same first name. So in this kind of cases, what you can do, you can add more constraints to your uh, particular test steps, right? So uh, here we can use the last name and the first name as constraint so that it can limit the search to this particular row, okay? So if I'm using uh, John Doe, then it will go ahead and search for this particular row because there are two constraints instead of just one constraint, okay? So let's try and uh, see how we can do this. So again, the same thing. Um, now let's change this um, and we will go for the last name. And here we will, instead of example.com or the email, we'll look for John Jane Doe, okay? Or John Doe. So we'll, uh, we'll look for um, the first name as John and the la last name as Doe, okay? And we'll change this action mode to constraint. And then finally we'll verify. So let's do that and here, Again, inner text equals to john at example.com. Okay. So uh, that's how Tosca will decide which row to select based on these two constraints. Okay. You can add any number of constraints based on your scenario to make the search unique so that you can uniquely search the particular row and column where you want to perform that particular action, which, whether it's a verification step or you want to perform some action on some other un particular cell, okay? So uh, let's again um, run this and let's see if it works. Still passed, 
uh, it was uniquely able to identify that particular row uh, using the constraints action mode. And it was also able to um, verify our email, right? So that's john at example.com. So that's how you can use all of these three action modes, which is constraint, verify, and select when you are steering through different tables or which are dynamic in nature or which has got these um, non-unique rows and columns. So you can steer through different rows uh, uniquely using this constraint action mode. So we'll look through some other action modes like buffer and wait on in our next session.